everybody. So I was looking at the surveys that many of you turned in. Thanks for turning those in. By the way, you still can if you'd like. I was looking at the surveys and I came to realize as your pastor that uh, it'd be great to do a little walkthrough for confession. Now, we do this for little kids, but we don't do it for adults. And you know what happens sometimes when you grow up and you, you're seven years old and then you're nine years old and then you're however many years old you are. Uh, sometimes you forget stuff, at least I do. And so it's good just to have little refreshers of the very basics of how to go to confession, starting at the door of the church, all the way into the confessional, and then afterwards. Because I know confession can seem like a big, scary experience, like going to the dentist or being thrown to the lions. But don't worry, there are no dentists here. There are no lions here. Uh, it's just me, and I am neither one of those. Um, so I'm here, and we actually have a cameraman, a special guest cameraman, uh, seminarian Andrew from Quincy. Seminary Andrew, you can say hi. Hi. Do you have anything else to say? I love going to confession. Nice. That's awesome. All right. So we walk in the door, St. Patrick's. Where am I going to go? Well, first, we have confession guides up here. Now, I know right now it says a children's guide to confession, but you know what? We're all kind of God's children, so and I'm going to get others up here. So you can grab this if you'd like. There are also many confession guides online. You can also use different apps. Sometimes people ask, can I bring this in? Can I bring my phone in? Can I bring a piece of paper into the confessional? Absolutely. Anything that's going to help you. If you ever do any like writing or you put a little check marks by, you know, your different sins. So for example, I uh, pulled my dog's hair or I yelled at my grandma or whatever. Those are my sins. Please don't tell anybody. But anyway, if you put little check marks next to them or you write them out, make sure at the end you tear it up. You can even burn it if you want, but please don't burn it in the church because we like our churches. All right, so we grab our confession guide and then come on in. You can choose any, any pew you want. Of course, there's Amen Corner back there. It's a popular place, but I'm going to choose this pew. I'm going to genuflect to Jesus. Now, if you're a tall person, a lot of times you have to put the pew, the, the kneeler down behind that. Sometimes I'm jealous of short people. And I make a sign of the cross if I want. You don't have to. Say a little prayer. Ask the Lord to help me examine my conscience if I haven't already. And then when I go through this, do I tell God that I love him? Yes or no? Etc. Etc. Have I watched bad things on TV? Etc. Etc. And after I've gone through this, asking the Holy Spirit to show me my sins so that I can love him more, remembering that it's about loving him, then... I'm ready to go to confession, as long as the confessional is available. And we'll see as we get closer, there's a little light on there. And if I want, I can take this in. It has the act of contrition on it. Um, it even has a little prayer before confession that you can say if you'd like. You don't have to. So I take the act of contrition. If I don't remember it, and that's totally fine. Uh, sometimes people will uh, they'll say certain things like, Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for my sins. Um, or they'll say, bless us, O Lord, and I'll say, well, you know, mealtime is after this, but there's all kinds of funny things that happen. People get nervous. It's funny. God loves us. He's very patient. So then we stand up, put our kneeler back up. I'll get the other one later. We'll come forward. Genuflect one more time just for good measure, and then... Here's our confession. Myself, Monsignor Mack, sometimes there's a guest priest. This is the light that's on that tells you there's a priest in the confessional. Now, if you saw somebody go in, then you probably don't go in. Usually, if the door is closed, that means somebody's in there. If the door's open, that means there's nobody in there. All right? So then we go in. Come on in. Now, the thing that I love about St. Pat's confessional is that it's a little bit cozy, right? And so it's kind of like a nice little country cabin. So first we have right here where you can go behind the screen. If you'd like to go behind the screen, that's great. You don't want to see the priest face to face. You want to more focus on the presence of Jesus, keep it anonymous. That's awesome. That's what God wants for you. But you also have the option, come on in, to squeeze past the priest who's sitting down here and then to go and sit right there. So you'll sit down, and you can go, this is the face-to-face -face option, both are great. The priest is wearing a purple stole. Purple is the sign of penance. It's also the sign, by the way, of royalty. 
And so we begin confession in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the priest will say, the, the priest will begin that way. And then you'll say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been how long since your last confession? Maybe five weeks, maybe seven months, maybe 40 years. And you know what? The longer it's been, the happier I get. Okay? Not that I want people to go a long time without confession, but if you come in here and you say it's been a bunch of years, I'm going to get super excited. So is Monsignor. So those who haven't been to confession in a long time, come on in. We're excited about that. So you say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And then you name your sins. You don't have to give a big, long story. You make sure that we name our sins, right? Not your mother-in-law's sins, not your dog's sins, right? You name your sins. And you can give detail if you want, but you don't have to. Something as simple as, I was rude to a coworker, or I gossiped about this person. Just small, small, sparse detail is good enough, all right? Once you've gone through all of the things that you can think of, uh, sometimes people forget because they get nervous, and that's totally fine. Once you've gone through all the things that you can think of, then when you get to the end, you say, for these and all my sins, I am sorry, or something like that, just to tell Jesus, like, look, I'm not perfect. I don't remember everything, but if something did pop up, I'm sorry. Okay? And then you pause, and the priest will talk to you for a little bit. He might give you some advice. He might say, hey, you know, you need to stop that old sin in there, um, which I think is generally pretty good advice. And then he'll say, this is your penance. Three Hail Marys, five Our Fathers, 14 Rosaries, something like that. I usually don't give people 14 Rosaries. It'll be a simple penance. And then after that, after he gives you your penance, you'll say the act of contrition. Once again, it's written right there. We have a copy around there. If you have it on an app, whatever you remember. If you come in and you happen to not have it, you forget it, you fumble around, totally okay. We'll help you through it. Um, you might also see different versions of the act of contrition. There's lots of different versions. That's okay too. So you say the act of contrition, and then comes the best part. The priest raises his hand, and he says the words of absolution, meaning that your sins and you, pff, completely separated. Your sins are done away with, destroyed, as far as the east is from the west, which means infinitely far. So that's the exciting part. And that's Jesus absolving you from your sins, no matter what. And then you can breathe easy, and then you can get up, go out into the, into the church again. And then at that point, you say your penance, whatever it was, your three Hail Marys or whatever, and then you're done. And just thank God and hopefully pray for the priest that heard your confession. And go on with your day. Know that you are cleansed from your sin. Know that you can have the joy of once again living as a, a child of God that's made, been made holy and clean and pure. And maybe even share with somebody, hey, I just went to confession. It wasn't as bad as I thought. So I'm praying for everybody. I hope that this Lent is a time to be more intentional and to receive the mercy of God in this, in this confession. And I pray that all of you can know God's mercy in new and profound ways. Thanks. God bless.